the Battle of Heraclea, which took place in 280 BC, with, led by Pyrrhus of Epirus against the Roman Republic. What's up guys and welcome back, I'm Pope John Paul and we're here with another Rome 2 historical battle for you today. Uh, this one is the Battle of Heraclea, which is part of the Epirus invasion of Italy, led by Pyrrhus in 280 BC. And in history this was a Epirus victory, uh, but we will see whether history can be recreated or whether Rome can be successful. It, in history it was a Pyrrhic victory, I'm pretty sure which is, well, a close victory, but with no real gains, which is how you get the, uh, well, the Pyrrhic victory, because Pyrrhus often had lots of victories, but he had no, gained no real advantage from it. So we have three Epirus armies here against three Roman armies, and uh, they're just all getting ready in position, so we've got uh, a main line uh, really made up of the mercenaries, we've got, like, Samnite warriors, we've got Italian spears, we've got... Uh, more Italian spears, we've got Italian swords. Then we've got a second line made up for hot plights, archers, a royal peltasts, and we've got a Hellenic Royal Cavalry, a uh, Royal Guard, sorry. And we've also got, well, we have got a Hellenic Royal Cavalry, we've got elephants. Here we've got cavalry, and we have some more pikes forming up a second line. We've also got more cavalry over here, which the Romans can't see. So they will be coming in as they, like, a sneak attack you can almost imagine. We've got a similar sort of setup to the Battle of Cannae that happened. So we have a start in the front line, we have Princapes in the second line, and we have Triarii in the third and final line, and we have some ve Velites uh, as missile support, and we have some cavalry over here with Equites as well. I mean, there's some uh, Socii extra Equites and Socii extra Extraordinarii, I'm pretty sure, in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, so we've got a really close battle today, so we will hopefully see some, uh, we'll hopefully see a really good battle and hopefully maybe a change in history. I'd like to see whether Rome could win this scenario. It is fairly balanced, you can see the balance power down here. Um, so it could go either way. I'd say Rome probably has a slight advantage because Roman infantry is, um, very strong. Oh, we have Hestati here, all getting ready in position. So I'm sure I've left a timer down below if you guys want to see when the battle starts. But if you haven't, uh, if you're just checking out these, or if you're listening to all my mumbo jumbo, please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment if there's any historical battles that you'd like me to reproduce for Rome 2, or for any other um, Total War. I'm open to suggestions, whether it's uh, Napoleonic, whether it's late medieval or ancient like now, I am open to suggestions. So I think the guys are just getting ready into position and the Histari will be moving forward soon. But I mean, I... Th yeah. So here we go. It looks like they're going to come forward. I was about to say, I was about to say something, but it looks like the Romans are coming forward now. So it's going to be Histari coming forward. We have uh, volleys already being thrown off. We have some Thoros spears in the front throwing javelins. We have Mercer Italians. Some harrowing volleys. They're getting a bit closer. They might throw some of their own javelins at Stati. No, here they come. The order's been given. Italian swords also getting the order to go in. And here we go. So, I mean, straight off the bat, it looks like the uh, Italian... Well, the Italian swords will have got a bit of an advantage by throwing javis at the Hestati, but... I don't think it's going to matter too much. We've got some Thoros spears. Oh, no, we've got... The mostly Italian spears. We've got Thoros spears lying around here somewhere, though. Over on this far flank over here. Okay. But, I mean, it's looking fairly good for the... Uh, for the Epirus army. These Hestati are already losing decisively. But there is more nasty stuff coming up. You can see in the background, Princapes are getting forward already. Just getting ready into position. So it's going to be a huge grind on the front line, I imagine. There's going to be some flanking movements going on. Uh, but it is a huge grind. So, and this was taken part by members of the Discord. So if you want to uh, get involved in some of these scenario battles and feature on the channel then do not forget to join the Discord. The link is down below in the description. 
And I hope to see some of you guys there. As you can see, Prinkipay's getting ready, throwing Javis in. Like those men that are just standing behind. I've got to throw our spears here. They just get chilling. And here we go. Cavalry is already getting ready to have some Sokia Equites already getting ready to charge. And the Mercer Italian Cav going in. And I imagine the Equites will probably win this because the Italian Cavalry is not great. It's uh, pretty poor. And we've got Aspis. I know these aren't Aspis. They look like Aspis though with their sort of Hellenic uh, helmets on. But it looks like it's going to be more equites. And we've got some infantry now joining. We've got some Sokia Hastati joining the fight. This is going to be a concern for Epis. He's going to need to get some infantry over here. We have elephants now moving over to the side. It'll be interesting to see whether they can do any damage. We've got archers also coming over to focus down these uh, these guys. These Velite. Okay, yeah, Velite, of course. Of course. And there you go, Triare now in here as well. We've got some spear infantry. So already some of the elites have been sent in to support. So it's kind of going against what the Romans would do. You wouldn't send Triare in to the end. But it's nice to see them changing up a little bit. Change the Roman tactics. See if they can win this. Because obviously if they followed the book, they're probably going to lose. But Triare are being sent in to help these cavalry. Let's see what can happen. The chaos is going on in on here. Not much you can tell the difference for. It's just infantry mixed in there. Front line though is looking a bit concerned. We've got Illyrian levies here breaking militia hot plate, uh, breaking through, breaking as well. We've got Hastati. Look at this. They've broken through the front line. They've got this nice angle. They hadn't set up properly the militia hot, militia hot plates, and they've got through. Um, this is Illyrian levies here. They should be able to hold them back for a while, chop them down. But here we go. They're get, they're pushing through. I wouldn't say this is a, like a push through or pull through. This is just like. He's given the order and they're all moving here to attack these Illyrian levies. It's not a bad idea. And here we go. So we've got hot plights coming over. I'm sending my hot plights over to support this fight. Because I'm realizing, well, the flank is gone. Look at this. Huge concern. Elephants already in the mix. Also, I mean, this is... I gave the order to send the elephants in because I thought they could certainly support the flank. And they might route some of the stuff. But it's looking like they're taking a lot of fire. Going to need some support for more cavalry and more infantry in here to give these guys a chance. They are trampling a lot of stuff. But they are dying. And there you go. There's the first one down. I'm sure these guys are going manic. But they're going manic in a load of Romans. So that's okay. We can live with that. Lots of ele elephants now dropping. A real shame. We've got more cavalry over here. It's the Salian cavalry getting focused down. And here we go. We're getting a flank is being established with the hot plights. To sort of secure this whole area because we've got a real problem. Sokia Hastati here trying to get around the flanks. Romans are really making some good moves here. They've got a bit of a gap which you could definitely get through here. But yeah, there's a real cause for concern. And now there's a huge. Now they're focusing on their right. They're uh, really focusing down um, like the reserves here. And they're breaking some Illyrian levies, which is no surprise they are just levies. We've got. What have we got going in? We've got militia hot plates going in to support the fight. Just hold them up. What we've got here, more militia hot plates, and we've got a general in here. Uh, we've got Hellenic Royal Cavalry already in. Getting focused down with Javis, lost quite a few men. But we're going to have to start mobilizing some of these reserves. Like these Royal Peltas back here, they're going to need to go forward. They're already starting to go forward here. But the Pikes might need to start going forward as well. And some of them already have been mobilized. We have Pikes in the front line here now. These guys are going to have to do a lot of work. Kill a lot of these uh, Hasai. The Hasai still haven't even broken. And the Prinkipes are already in here, which is a, a worrying sign. They're really being able to bulk up their troops to the Romans. And they're going to be able to just push through, like, just sheer massive numbers. But there we go. The Pikes are down in position. And these side should break soon. We've got Prinkipes ready, but it is a bit of concern. We've got Velites back here. Look at these guys. So many of them just throwing Javis. And these guys are nasty. I mean, they've not got the range, but Javis, they can do a lot of damage. But they... We'll run out of ammo soon. It looks like they are getting quite close to it. They're trying to focus down this pike unit over here. Uh, which is now going over to support on this flank over here. Because the right is really in trouble. Look at this. This is a huge flank. Uh, that is going to happen. Setting over some Royal Peltas. They should certainly hold the line for a while. And they'll certainly bulk it out. The left flank is looking a bit more stabilized. Since those hot plates have gone over there. We've got a lot of cavalry uh, in here now. We've got a lot of Aspis cavalry. We've got Italian cavalry. It's starting to force back the Roman cavalry, which is winded and, uh, well, 
yeah, winded just really. And then we've got hot plates coming in now. So with a bit of infantry support, we should be able to do some damage. And this cavalry unit here has been doing bits. It's been routing Velites here and just causing utter chaos. And now I'm not going to allow the Triarii to set up. Hot plates going in. I'm going to break their line. I'm going to cause a little havoc as possible. Yes, I won't be able to form my own line with my hot plates, but I don't want the Triarii doing any forming of lines or squares. And there you go. The cavalry fight's looking okay. You can see Sokiai. We've got Sokiai Histati in here as well. I didn't even see these guys. But they are uh, They're looking like they're pretty beaten up as well. I mean, they're actually pulling out of their combat. And they might go around for a flank. But let's see. Lose it, losing decisively. They're breaking and losing decisively. So, yeah, that's huge. Huge. There we go. Our generals are being attacked as well in the back here. In the rear here. We've got a sailing cavalry unit. It's got a round and it's going after generals. It's not a bad idea. The generals were left way out here in the back uh, defending. And I think both of them are okay right now. Both of them seem okay. But they're beginning to chase down, which is kind of just funny. Just to watch. But, I mean, the Striaria is quickly coming over to support. So, I mean, we'll see what happens here in a moment. And it looks like a Roman general might be about to die. Who knows? Who knows? They need to definitely send some... They've got, like, some Princopes. Oh, no, Sokiai Extraordinaria. Send them back. Send these guys back. General nearby. Yeah, they're still alive. Still alive. Oh, my gosh. There's some harrowing, like, vo like jabby throws. I just want to keep an eye. Is the general going to die? Uh, who knows? Velite... Oh, not Velite. He's got Archers now focusing down. And those uh, Thessalian Cavs are in some real trouble. They might be dead. They may or not may not be dead. And we still got one unit of cavalry over here. We still got a Hellenic Royal Guard, but it looks like I'd say. But oh, they're both wavering. I'd say they're probably both dead. Oh my gosh, the volleys, the volleys. Yeah, those two Roman generals are dead. So it only leaves one Roman general, very much intact. Uh, so that's going to do a lot of damage to the morale of the Romans. Prink, uh, not Prink pays. Uh, hot plates here in their well, not hot plates. Pike, sorry, in their in their pike wall. And now for forcing back Triarii and uh, and Princapace, so that's good. This right has been was really under threat for a long time. It still is. They've still got a huge amount of elite troops here. And it's slowly breaking through. This is now going to be a hole in the line that's about to break. These uh, Storos Spears are just about to go. So they can break through here. And they've actually got a huge flank that they could get around here if they wanted to. There is only one unit of Royal Peltas holding them back. All you need to do, put engage with one unit of Princapace and then get the other one to just get around. I mean, they could certainly surround these Lyrian levies, break them. Just being a bit, like, this flank is very much open for the taking. They just need to uh, be aggressive. They're being a bit defensive for Rome. Also here, huge gap in the line. Can definitely get through this gap here with the uh, Exocchi Extraordinary. Good volley there on the Sokiai Extra Extraordinary. Those archers are really going to be doing some damage now. And the left flank is actually secured. So, there we go. After so much chaos... And losing so many cavalry and elephants, we've slowly stabilized the side, especially with the hot plates coming to support. Don't usually uh, enjoy using hot plates, but this time they were our saving grace. I was so thankful that we had these guys just to like throw in and just support the cavalry fight. And here we go, we've got pikes now on the front line coming forward to support. This pike unit here pretty beaten up and it's slowly like pushing back these princopes, but I mean. It's been a rough one. It has been a rough old fight. They just need to send in the last of their units, really, and just got to hope that they can make a strong push through the center. If they can push through the center, like some areas are really thin, like hot plates here, they're nearly dead. These guys here, nearly dead. Um, and then there's gaps here in the line. Uh, the general here, if my general is uh, falling back. He's having to go over here to support. Because they're surrounding here, which is really good. This is where they need to really be focusing down. The right flank over here is their their chance of success. We've got Pikes so surrounding Princopes. These guys are going to probably get sandwiched and killed between some uh, Royal Peltasts and some Pikes. Not a good not a good sandwich at all for Princopes. But he's going to send in some of his some more Princopes. He's going to try and flank around the Pikes. Not a bad decision. If I'm going to flank, he will also flank. And it's a really good t tactic. It'll get rid of one of the pike units, which are really precious to us right now. It's still really close. Even with two Roman generals dead, it is still insanely close. A good volley there into the side. 
And there we go. I actually broke here. So this is huge. Um, so we have another unit here that's threatening the, the pike line. And right now I'm just going to turn around and I'm going to get ready to engage this uh, Prinkipay unit. So I'm not going to set up in time. So this is uh, going to be a nasty sandwich for the pikes. So it turned from the pikes being sandwiching someone to them being sandwiched themselves. Which is a sad, sad sight. So I'm going to use this pike, lose this pike unit pretty quickly. Two units of Prinkipay is going to sandwich them. That's not a good sight. What have we got here? Rejoining the fight. We've got some Prinkipays. My general is actually now coming in to save the day. Or well, he's going to try and save the day. First he's going to take out this small unit of Prinkipays. And what we've got here? We've got a Hellenic Royal Guard. We've finally got the big guns coming out. To support the front fight. But here, you can see, look at this. The cavalry in the rear is causing so much chaos. And these guys are actually facing the wrong way. So they could do a rear charge on these guys. But I mean, they've got so many units free that could have uh, that could get round. They could start flanking around here. I actually would. Like the cavalry's not the end of the world. You just send a couple of units, flank around here, and have the rest just either chase down the cavalry or just do nothing. But here we go. All, well, not do nothing, but just face them off so they can't do anything. But here you go, Soki Extraordinary. They're turning around. Oh, they look like they were going to go for it. The cavalry. It looks like it was going to go for it, but no. Very well, very well. They live to see another day, though, Soki Extraordinary. Now we've got Hellenic Royal Pikes coming forward. Hellenic Royal Guard, sorry, coming forward. This is a stu silly move by me because now they're just going to get flanked. Um, so this, yeah, this Pike unit is going to get beaten up. But, oh, that's nice. Cavalry now coming in to save this right flank. The right flank was still a real concern for us. Still is. Um, yeah, that Pike unit basically got rinsed. It's still in there, but it's nearly dead. And my Hellenic Royal Guard, I'm now pulling out and I'm going to try and uh, get the general... To hold the ground and sort of save the day. What's this? Thor of Spears? Yeah, I mean, look at this Pikes. They're not the Pikes, yeah, they're all dead. Now the Cavs in here doing its bit, but it's really beaten up Cavs, so it's unlikely to do much. The Pikes are down, and here we go. Start to stabby stabby these Soki Extraordinary. Not Extraordinary, these are Soki Hestati. These are the crappy ones compared to the Extraordinary. The, the Sokiai are all here to represent like the Italian like uh, allies that the Romans had at this point. Because obviously their their armies weren't fully like just Roman. They did still have Italian allies. At this point, there's Italians fighting for, e uh, for Epirus and there's also Italians fighting for Rome. They just couldn't quite decide who they were going to fight for. So put the hat in both rings. Here we go though, the pikes are now freed up and they're also going to support in other areas. Chariae now are like the main front line for the Romans. And then a real situation here, this is a real concern. A big encirclement here going on. Lots of Romans, it's kind of like Cane all over again and the archers are focusing down into the rear of these Chariae. This is really awful to see. If, you, if you're rooting for Rome, then uh, I'm sorry but the Romans are looking a bit rough right now. These Romans aren't even looking the right... Oh, there they are. They're a Triarii unit in square formation. Not a bad idea. We've got pikes though poking away at them. That's the only way we're going to probably break through these pike lines. Uh, these square lines, I should say. We've got more units breaking, sadly. Cavalry coming into charge. That's a, Look at the size of that Sokiai unit breaking. 149. It's wavering. That's awful. But they have lost all their generals of Rome, so they are in a bit of a pickle right now. And they've got a huge chain route going on. Look at this. Huge. And it looks like Epirus is going to take the day uh, looking at this. So history is going to be repeated and Pyrrhus is going to win the Battle of Heraclea once again. A costly victory. Uh, some may say a Pyrrhic victory. Um, so it kind of keeps the history as well with like how many men were lost. Which was a lot in fairness. Um, I mean... So I'd just like to thank everyone that took part. Uh, Aiden, TZN, Skosta, Prem, and Dodgy Gob. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you look like Aiden lost most of his army. He lo only had about 400 men left. I lost about half of mine. I did come with the most elite army, but... Yeah, and I was like going in last, but I still lost a lot. And TZN, who was playing as like the cavalry force with a few archers and some other stuff. Uh, he lost about half of his army as well, if not over half. But I mean, so I'll quickly go over my army first. 
So, I mean, my general got 227 kills. It's pretty good since he joined pretty late into the battle. My pikes actually didn't too, do too bad for being joining quite late. Hot plates did really well, 171, 126. They're killing off a lot of the cavalry and the left flank that the Romans uh, were pushing really hard. The pikes, they died, but they got, both got 100 kills, so not bad. Most of my royal peltas getting over 200 kills, or three of them anyway, getting over 200 kills. And then my uh, Thoros Spears kind of just like holding the line and they just kind of soaked up the fire for a bit. They did okay, but not great. Then Aiden, who was playing as like the weaker mercenary section of the army, did okay. He had 227 kills with his Hellenic Royal Cavalry, his general. It's not bad at all. And then he got his Mercenary Etruscan Hot Plights, over 100 kills on each. Excellent. And then he's got over 100 kills on each of his Mercenary Salmonites as well. And then his uh, Italians, I mean actually his Italian Swords did okay, 100 plus kills each. But um, yeah, the spears, better not to speak about them. And his levies, which he wasn't actually supposed to bring, he was supposed to bring a uh, axe unit, some Agrianian axemen, Agrianian, sorry, axemen um, instead, like as a missile unit. But the levies, in the end, did okay. They did their job. And TZN, who brought the, uh, the cavalry and elephants and all the weird stuff put together, I only got 100 kills with his elephants, which is kind of down to my... Down to me, I kind of told him to send his uh, elephants in when they were definitely unsupported. Um, but they just were kind of needed there to hold the left flank while we got hot plates up to uh, save that flank. Um, his cavalry, though, did excellent. 245 and, two and 145 for his Aspis companion cavalry. And then his uh, Thessalian cavalry did okay, getting 134. His archers getting 183 as well. That's not bad. Over, four out of the five getting over 100 kills. And then his uh, militia hot plates... Just kind of there for just soaking up ammo and just slowing down units again. And his pikes getting over 170 kills each. Um, so well done to him. And then Skosta, who's playing as the Hastati army. He did fit fairly well with his Hastati, getting 155 kills, 149 with two of his units. They're really well done there. Um, I mean, yeah, the Hastati were probably going to die because they are going up against some pretty strong units at some points. Um, they were going to break through the first line, but then after that, they were going to have a tough time. So well done to Skosta for uh, having doing a good job with a what was a hard job um and then prem who was playing as the princopes did excellent 316 kills 327 with two of his units of princopes excellent and then his uh Sokia extraordinary not so well only 152 and his Sokia has started only 94 but i mean his princopes definitely did the best out of anyone in this roman army they did insane you can look at the stats there they most of them got over 100 kills then dodgy gob who was playing as the triarii who are the last and final like section of the army that's supposed to be sent in. And they didn't do so well in fairness, only getting 98 kills. Um, actually 114, 119 are the best two there. Um, but he had also the cavalry section and I mean, though the cavalry did initially very well um, with the support of Chariai, they eventually just got overwhelmed unfortunately by elephants and just hot plates. But anyway guys, if you enjoyed uh, the Battle of Heraclea, another historical battle for Rome 2, then please do leave a like, subscribe if you want to uh, see more historical battles, and just to support the channel, we are trying to hit 1300 subs by the end of the month, and we're getting very, very close. So keep it up, guys, and leave a comment as well. Like I said, if you want to uh, me to do any scenario battles, any historical battles, whether it's uh, another Rome 2, like sort of period 1, or it's Attila, or Napoleon, whatever. Let me know if you, there's any historical battles that you want me to try and recreate. And until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you guys later.